Hope everyone's stay, staying safe and doing well. I just want to take uh, a few moments, maybe once or twice a week here, to just release some videos of some of the athletes that we've had a chance to work with over the years um, and highlight some of the areas that we feel are key to uh, maximizing speed or improving change of direction or tight turns or whatever the specific skill set we're working on is. Also give us a bit of a chance to show you what some of the videos and some of the testing we would do with our athletes within our camps would look like. So here, what I've done is uh, we have Matt Savoy, who's uh, who I've worked with since he was in grade four in St. Albert Hockey Academy, as well as with NAX over the past couple seasons prior to moving to Winnipeg. If I just play the video for you guys, the first thing you'll probably notice when you watch Matt skate is there's an incredible frequency in his stride. So what that means is his rate of turnover is probably a lot higher than you'd see with a lot of other players. And that's part of what makes him a very dynamic skater. However, with that being said, he also doesn't sacrifice any length in his skating stride. So if I just zoom in on the picture on the right here, the first thing you'll notice is that when he skates, the knee gets very far in front of the, the toe. And what that allows is it creates a lot of ankle dorsiflexion or ankle mobility. So if I just draw this on here for you guys. All right, so right now that's at about roughly 55 degrees of ankle dorsiflexion, which will allow the knee to sit out in front of the toe, but also creates this really low, strong, powerful position with a lower leg where it gets below 90 degrees. And at the same time also slides the hips out in front of the, the foot a little bit more. So if we just zoom in on this picture right here where he gets right in front of the camera, what you'll notice is if I draw a line from the ankle up, the hips just sit slightly behind um, the back of the ankle. With a player with less ankle mobility, what we typically see, if you think about somebody sitting in a chair, we might see a 90 degree angle such as this. However, what Matt's done now is we've tilted that chair forwards and created that same angle, but allowed the hips, which are up here, to sit more over top of the ankle, which is down here. All right, so if we create that line, what we now do is we allow the athlete to get in a position to take the next push sooner. So in this case, as soon as that right or that left foot extends into full extension here, which he does an excellent job of, you're going to notice that that right foot is basically directly underneath the hip and that next push starts right away. So this is a very small or limited glide phase, almost no glide if you watch uh, the video very slow, very closely. The one thing that to this frequency is great, however, lots of times when players get this frequency, what they end up doing is they shorten each excessive stride or they don't get that full extension. So with Matt here, you'll notice that the extension on every single push is full. Right through to the end, we get a good solid snap through the ankle um, and everything is fully extending with every push. If we just take a quick look at the other side from the back view, let's bring you back to the start here. As you watch him again, now a couple things we also want to look at are the length of the stride, but also the width. So with most athletes, uh, we tend to push too much behind and not enough out to the side. So for example here, Matt's at about 40 degrees on that leg and on the other side looks a little bit wider actually. At that side's 48 degrees. So what ends up happening is we end up seeing this really wide, long, powerful push. The other thing that a lot of coaches and players don't really think about, um, and McDavid also does an excellent job of this if you watch him skate really closely, is watch the movement of the head. So if I draw a line right through the midline of the body here, what you're going to see is this head shifts fairly exaggerated from side to side. There's very little up and down movement, but there's a lot of side to side movement. So this side to side movement, although some people might deem it a waste of energy, what it actually does, it allows for a very vigorous weight shift or weight transfer, which if you know in any sport, that weight shift is going to create way more power. So here you'll see the head lined up directly over top of the foot. As he starts the push, he almost throws his body over top of that right foot. The other thing that this also does 
is, or another thing that he also does here to create that is if you look at the shoulder movement, you'll see the arm swing is a little bit side to side where it's moving this direction. But at the same time, as he drives that left arm forwards and across his body, the right leg is now going to push in the exact opposite direction away from him. Very similar to if you were to spike a volleyball or jump to spike a volleyball, the arms go behind you. As you pushed into the ground, your arms would drive above your head to make that spike. Again, you're going to see same thing on the other side where that arm goes across and the push goes the opposite direction. So this pattern creates a very, very exaggerated weight shift. It's almost like he's jumping from one foot to the other. Like I said, if you watch uh, some videos of McDavid skating, you'll see that very similar pattern. The other thing you'll also see is there's a lot of rotation through the, the shoulder girdle as well. Right? The hips are rotating, the shoulders are rotating, everything's turning and kind of following this pattern right here. We're getting that rotation across as the push happens. Okay, so it's not just a side to side arm swing, it's actually an entire body movement which is rotating as he pushes. Right, so the two things that I kind of just want to come back to with Matt here is number one, we see a very uh, great lower body position where that knee's way out over the toe and that increases the frequency without sacrificing the length. And number two, a very vigorous and powerful arm swing which creates the extra power in a strut. There are a few other things we could kind of talk about here as well. Uh, with Matt, I know he doesn't have a, a stick in his hand. We just do that simply to um, perform our testing. So you'll see the timing lights here, which is at 100 feet. And what that allows us to do is just monitor um, our athletes' progression through the year, see where their numbers are compared to where they were the previous season, or even you know from Wee as they progress up, what kind of progression are we seeing. Um, we're trying to quantify those results, so we keep all our testing protocols the same. And number two, without that, the other thing you might notice is the head is kind of buried a little bit here. But when we're not thinking game-specific skating, lots of times players will do this. You'll even see that in the NHL skills competition where you'll see the players kind of bury their head and just, just try to be as fast as they can. So that's part of what we want to see in our testing. If you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out to uh, www.brianatmakingstrides.com. Uh, <clears throat> or sorry, our website's www.makingstrides.com or reach out to me, Brian, at makingstrides.com. Thanks.